So the next aspect of our work together is going to be tongue twisters. Now tongue twisters, you probably have heard of them, you've probably done some before, are really about making our mouths, our lips, our teeth, the tongue, our soft palate, uh, our jaw, all get ready to do some really amazing enunciation, pronunciation, articulation in the speech work that we do. So these are again like, like little workouts for all those muscles that create the intricate sounds of our voice. So this is, we want them to be precise, we want them to be strong, we want them to be clear, we want to be able to make all of those very individual sounds strong and clear and powerful. So in order to do that, we have to work out our our articulate what we call our articulators. So the so tongue twisters are the best ones to do. And um, the first tongue twister that I'm going to give you is is this one. It's just in a, uh, it's itty it's itty bitty smitty was bitten by fatty's ratty cattle. Now I have, you hear me, and I sound British, of course, I used to teach in England, so sometimes it comes out, especially when I'm working on my tongue twisters for some reason, but that's okay. Um, what I want you to do is be really precise here, and you can follow along on the guide that I've, I've, I've printed, I've given you to print out, and, um, and so itty bitty smitty, you want you to really work with the T, so you're going to make that T sound. Itty, and really emphasize itty bitty, and I always feel like it's it's really good to act it out as a character, right? If you're not an actor, that's fine. It just helps with if you get in to the over pronunciation. I also tell actors all the time to uh, channel their inner Ian, McK Ian McKellen or Dame Judi Dench uh, because <laughs> because that's what really helps them too to just just to play, and you, it's okay, you feel really silly, but then you're doing it right. <laughs> That's what I say, it's okay to feel like a little idiot, <laughs> then you're doing it right. All right, so I'm gonna sit, uh, not with my legs crossed, I'm like open up, you can do the standing, I usually do it standing, I'm always sitting, because I'm thinking, oh, you might, this might be the case for you, is that you'll be seated. So you wanna make sure your spine is nice and straight, your legs are not crossed, they're uncrossed, you know, your hips, you're sitting right on top of your pelvis really nicely, and you're nice and open and relaxed. You've done all of the other work that I asked for you to do, you, and you're ready now to do uh, your articulation exercises, your tongue twisters. Itty Bitty Smitty was bitten by Fatty's Ratty Cattle. Now, when you get to this end with the L, cattle, you will hear me do that. Why do I do that? Because I'm, because when we project our voices, we want the voice to go all the way to the back of the room. Cattle stops the mouth. You see how my mouth just kind of closes and stops the sound. If I go cattle, if I go cattle, it falls. If I go cattle, la, I open my mouth, cattle, la, it, it, cattle. Then hopefully my mouth will open and then that way the sound will make it to the back of the room. So this is one of the ways in which to train myself not to just completely shut my mouth when I am done speaking at the end of lines. Also, you want to watch when you are speaking on this point, because it's, we're right here. When you are speaking and you come to the end of a line or a thought, that you don't drop your endings in case that's what you mean. Because then people don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> uh, it happens all the time. People do it. And they just drop the endings of what they're saying as opposed to lifting. I always think, lift your endings. Take it up a bit. <laughs> Isn't that right? I mean, maybe you're like you'll do a lot of questions. You don't want to do that. But it, the, the, you're thinking lift instead of drop. It's more powerful. And you'll project to the back of the room. Okay, so again. Itty Bitty Smitty was bitten by Fatty's Ratty Cattle. Now I've, oh, now I've done this thing where I've rolled my R. Yes, if you can roll your R, do it. It's great, great tongue exercise, nice releasing the tongue, get that tongue involved, and we get all fun with it, right? 
itty bitty Smitty was bitten by Fatty's ratty cattle. <laughs> you feel silly, but it's really it's a really good exercise. Okay, moving on. From itty bitty Smitty, we have the next one, which is a bunch of R's. Oh, I love R's. So again, if you have a lazy mouth, you'll have trouble with R's, and this is a good exercise to wake that up. Uh, this is round and round the mulberry bush, the ragged rascal ran. So on this one, not only do I have the R at the front, the alliteration of the R, but I also have the N and the D and the L, and I have to make sure that those are there. Otherwise, we don't know if I'm saying round, around, <laughs> the mulberry bush. Like, what, what am I saying? You won't hear it. So this is your endings of, of words that you emphasize to make clear. Round and round the mulberry bush, the ragged rascal ran. If you want to overemphasize those, en those endings, the N, the D, the L, round and round the mulberry bush. The ragged rascal ran. So we don't get lazy. We don't go ran. We go ran. And and if you are going to be performing on a stage and you're really having to project your voice in to far distances, I recommend to actors to do the l and the n and the d. Again, opening up the the mouth so that the sound projects to the back of the house. So what that ends up being like is this. Round and round the mulberry bush, the ragged rascal ran. Just opening it up. So when I say ran, it's still happening, even though I'm not overemphasizing when I'm actually speaking, and it can go if that sound gets projected as opposed to my mouth closing and the sound going nowhere but right here in my facial resonator. So um, that's what you should be working on as well, that one. Round, yeah, that one you can do the R's too. You can go round and round. Oh, I lost my roll there. Round the mulberry bush. The ragged rascal ran. Have fun with it. And you get really good. And then you're like, well, look at me. I can roll my R's. Then the next one is uh, an articulator that will help you to work on your S's, which, boy, they can be tough, and T's. So what I mean by tough is, is sometimes in our speaking, if we have a lot of S's, it can get kind of funny um, and unclear. And the T sound. We tend to get lazy on our T's, so we want, this is an exercise, this uh, particular tongue twister is to help us with our S's and our T's. So it's, um, I insist that he resists ghosts with his fists. Yeah? So I insist that he resists ghosts with his fists. I insist, I always say, hit me with that T, I insist that he resists ghosts with his fists. So see, you have to get really fists, and it's T and the sit sound. See if you can make that happen. Fists. With his fists. Yeah? Good. Here is a really nice long one for you to memorize and to practice. With the S's again, S sounds. Sister Susie's sewing shirts for soldiers. Such skill at sewing shirts, my fine young sister Susie shows. But soldiers say they'd sooner sit on thistles than to wear the soft, saucy, silky shirts that sister Susie sews. Some shorter ones to practice will be uh, this one, Unique New York, Unique New York. 
Unique New York. And then you can see if you can go faster with it. Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Make sure on this one that you pronounce that D in red. Don't let your tongue get lazy. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. But, um, rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. This is a good one for the bees. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Black bugs blood. Black bugs blood. So make sure you get that k sound. Bugs blood. Yeah? Black bugs blood. Black bugs blood. And the final one I will give you is this. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock, in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. <laughs>